<laughs> All right. Well, I guess I don't want to wait too long. I got a lot of stuff I wanted to do and talk about. Um, <clears throat> so here we go. Uh, Del Willowen, uh, Abel Ryan Dewayu, Lucky Boo Dipetku, Metla Katla Dewawatku, uh, Juno Dewazogu. Um, hello, my name is, is Abel. Uh, it is good to see all of you. Um, I am of the Lucky Boo clan, uh, Wolf clan, and I am originally from uh, Metlakatla, and I currently live in uh, Juneau, uh, Alaska. Um, welcome to uh, the uh, Sheldon Jackson Museum's uh, Summer uh, Artist Demonstrator Program. Um, due to the, the way of the world, we are doing uh, online uh, classes and presentations, which are new, exciting, and scary all at the same time. Um, and I get to the uh, uh, distinguished privilege of being the uh, first artist of the season at the museum and helping them to work out all of their books, which has been fun, exciting, and scary. Um, so I want to thank uh, beginning here, the Friends of the Sheldon Jackson Museum for um, having me here and for making this possible, and the National Endowment for the Arts for, um, uh, uh, for the grant that is helping to make this uh, program uh, happen, which is absolutely wonderful. Um, today, I'm going to go through kind of my process for how I, uh, how I do a painting um, with uh, form line design and kind of show you some of the stuff that I have. Um, so I'm not one who likes to sharpen my pencil. So I always have a mechanical pencil with me for some of my rough sketching. Um, and Something really fun with form line design is that the eraser is always your friend. So if your eraser is as worn down as mine and you don't have a replacement for the one on your pencil or the, your yellow pencil or whatever color it is, the eraser is all worn down. It's always good to have a backup, which very quickly becomes your main eraser. Um, erasers are very handy to have. Uh, other thing that we're going to be using uh, today is we're going to be using uh, paint brushes. You'll notice here that these are round paint brushes. I know a lot of people like to use flats, but I find that um, if you use a round, you save yourself a lot of, of trouble uh, and things go a lot better. I have a number two and a number six. These are actually uh, liner brushes, so the bristles are just a little bit longer which helps with uh, a little bit of forgiveness when you're painting lines. Um, but a regular number six and a regular number two would work just fine. Um, another important thing to have is something to hold your paint in. Um, you can see I did a little bit of painting earlier with this. Um, and just a little dish to hold your paint. You could use paper or a plastic lid. Uh, glass lid, um, anything for a palette to hold your paint. The paints I'm going to be using here are acrylic paint. Um, my colors that I'm using, this is a uh, ceramic coat. It's a red iron oxide, um, which is a really nice shade of red. And then I have um, some black paint in this little container here. Um, another really important thing to have is a cup to hold your water in. And even more important, your cup that's holding your water for your paint should not look like your coffee cup. It's just incredibly embarrassing to uh, drink your paint water. And even more so to put your uh, paintbrush in your coffee. So 
to try to keep things separated. It really helps. Um, and let's see what else. For just some drawing today, I'm going to use just some regular paper. And then when we get into the painting, um, I'm going to use uh, some watercolor paper. Uh, and that will hold the paint better and the paper will be less likely to uh, get really wavy on, on you when you're, while you're working uh, to help keep a nice flat surface uh, to paint. So form line design real quick is an abstract art form that utilizes um, three major shapes. We have an ovoid, a U shape and an S shape. And we use other shapes as well to help create our designs, um, but they help to highlight these different um, uh, uh, shapes that we're gonna be using. Um, the ovoid is gonna be one of the first shapes that we use in our design. Uh, I'm not gonna be able to go through too much about how to draw an ovoid um, because I really wanna get into the fun stuff, um, but you can follow along. And um, I'll show you a little bit of, of how to do it, but it'll be moving pretty quick. Um, form line being an abstract art form means that you can use it to represent a variety of different animals, people, objects, um, but also it's used to represent ideas. Um, uh, for instance, this design right here behind me that I've got drawn up on the wall is the raven design. Uh, and it represents my father's crest, uh, which is Gunhara. And you can see here that, you know, I've got the, the straight beak, which kind of represents the, you see how the raven has a straighter beak compared to, let's say an eagle. And then up here in the top of the head, there's a little uh, crest going across there. Because um, if you have ample opportunity to watch ravens like we do here in Alaska, um, you'll notice that some ravens have a hairdo, uh, which is really fun. Um, and then over here on this drawing is a wolf, Lahibu, which is my crest. And you can see the, the wolf design represented up here with the longer snout. It's got a, a longer ear, um, has paws, a long tail, um, and a, a bit of a slender body shape as compared to that of a bear. And you can see here the bear has a shorter ear, bigger paws, shorter snout, and a really cute little fluffy tail on, on its other end there. Um, and when we're drawing our designs, we're thinking scientifically about our subject, um, kind of an observational science. We uh, look at the important features of an animal, what makes it special and unique from everything else, and, and then to decide how we're going to um, show these special uh, and unique characteristics um, using ovoids and U-shapes and S-shapes to create our design. Um, and that being said, how about we do some drawing um, to get started. I'm going to draw a design on regular paper with a dark pencil first, because um, it'll show up better on, on camera. And I already have my design drawn out on the other paper with uh, my hard pencil here. This is a 3H pencil. Uh, and I like to use 3 3H pencil when I'm uh, doing painting on paper because uh, it leaves a very light mark which doesn't bleed through when you're painting, uh, especially with red paint. All right, let's see. Let's do a share screen here and we can move over there. Okay. 
So here we have our paper here. Um, the thing that I want to draw today um, and, and paint, just so I can walk you through this process, is we're going to do a wolf design. So with our wolf design, we're going to think about the attributes of the wolf. Okay, uh, wolf has a long ear, long ears, long tail. It has uh, sharp teeth, so canine teeth. and molars. Um, it has paws, has slender body, sometimes it has a long tongue in the design. Okay. And these are all important attributes to think about when we're creating our design, okay? Um, I have an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper here, and I wanna be considerate of as much of this space as I can in my design. So I'm going to kind of plan out where I want things to be. I'm gonna have my wolf kind of sitting up. So I wanna make sure that I have room for my head up here. Okay, and a body coming down and arms coming out with paws, okay, and a tail coming up around the back, all right? So this is just really lightly, just kind of blocking in space, all right? Now, when I go to start working on my design, I'll start up here at the head, and I'm going to start with a form line ovoid. Okay, so my form line ovoid is going to start up here, and I want this ovoid to be longer than it is tall. The wolf has a bit of a long snout to it. And you see this shape here where it has a curve line on the top and an upward curve on the bottom as well smaller corners in the bottom, bigger curved corners in the top, and it's widest here on this on the um, sides here. Now to make this a form line ovoid, we're going to draw another ovoid inside. Okay. And you'll notice how it's wider on the top, narrow on the bottom, and narrow on the sides. So in form line design, we're always going from thin around to thick and then back down to thin. We're always following that pattern, okay? So here's my form line ovoid. From here, I wanna start working on my snout. So I'll come off of the bottom of my ovoid, out. I don't want my snout or my beak or whatever it is I'm drawing to be longer than my ovoid, because otherwise I'll be drawing either a toucan or an anteater and neither one of those are native to Alaska. So for this snout here, I'm gonna do a teardrop snout. I'm gonna come wrapping up around and back down, coming to a point, the bottom. And I'm going to draw another one inside and back down. Okay. And then connect that. So I'm going to take and draw a U shape coming down off of the ed top edge of the ovoid and sliding on out towards the end of the snout. And make this a form line U shape here, like this, but drawing our line here so that we're touching here on one point and on the ovoid. So everything connects to the ovoid, okay? And you see how I go from thin to thick to thin, thin to thick to thin. 
Now I'm going to work on my jaw, bringing my line down and coming out. I don't want to bring my jaw down too far. Okay. Wolves are not noted for their ability to swallow deer whole. That would be the snake, which is also not native to Alaska. And you'll see here how I'm coming back to the back of my ovoid on the inside edge of the line and bringing another line down, kind of parallel to that other line and then out and then curving down to round off the bottom lip. If we can get that to line up with our end of our snout, we're doing good. Now wolves are, have a big mouth, but we need to make this one a little bit smaller. So we're gonna come into the mouth here and off of the bottom of our form line ovoid, we're gonna draw a line coming down, kind of curving down to a point here on the bottom of the jaw. And we're gonna do another line just inside of that from the inside line of our ovoid coming down and this will separate our mouth from our cheek. And once we have that, we can open up our cheek by erasing the outside edge of our form line ovoid, like so. And now we're gonna draw a U shape for the ear. So I'm gonna come off of near the middle of the back of the head, or the top of the head here, and come back with a, a line and then come back in here like this. So I have two legs and a top and I'm modifying this U shape with a pointy end to represent the pointy bit of the ear of the wolf. And again, I wanna make this form line So I'm going to have a thicker top on my um, on my design here on my uh, the top of my U shape, and the legs are going to be narrower. You want to make sure they're about the same size. Now, if you're wondering how size how big they should be, the ovoid here, the top part of the ovoid is always going to be the thickest part of the design. So you want to make sure that your U shape, the top of your U shape, is not thicker than this here. And then the legs of your U-shapes could be the same um, thickness as the sides and bottom of your form line ovoid. And then just real quick here, we have an eye. And we're gonna use another ovoid to fill that in. And then a fine line that goes around it. It's going to come out to a point on the ends. Like so. Okay. In order we're going to word draw the body in here real quick. And I'm going to do a curve line here for my back. So we want this wolf to have good posture while it's sitting here. And I'm gonna make this a U-shaped body, not too far out, because you know you want your wolf to be nice and slender. The nice thing about paper is you can move it around if you need to. And you'll notice how I'm coming up to a point and just touching, I can make this a little bit smaller actually. There we go, that looks much better. That's why the eraser's handy. If you don't like something, change it. Okay, so I've got my U shape here and I wanna make this form line. So I'm gonna do a thicker top here, coming down 
on the legs and down almost to a point here. And now I'm going to give it a little bit of a back here as well. Okay. So you can see that shape. And the tail, we're going to come right off of the bottom here. And we're going to have a line coming up and curving around. You don't want your tail to be too thick. Remember, it's a wolf, not a, not a husky. Okay. Now you'll notice how this tail is quite a bit thicker than the top of our ovoid up here. So we're going to break up this line here. And we're going to make this into a combination of uh, an ovoid and U-shapes. So using the top and bottom line of our tail here at, in the middle as the top and bottom part of our ovoid. And block in the edge sides of our ovoid. And then our top sides and bottom inside line. There we go. Like so. And then we could block in the rest of this here with our U shapes. Remembering that the top of our U shape is going to be thicker than our legs. And we can put in what's called a split U on the tip of the tail here. And we do that by this little shape here is referred to sometimes as a trigon. So three points to break up the space. And we'll do the same thing on the other end here, breaking up the space down here as well. And on this one here, because I've got all these beautiful words describing this thing, we'll just put in a bottom leg for now, and then we can, I can get into the painting part. So for the leg, I'm going to start here at the bottom at a point coming up, curving out, making a giant U shape, and coming down just short here, because I'm going to have my hind paw, back paw, here with an ovoid, form line ovoid. And real quick, a modified split U shape on the end to make the claws coming out. Like that. Now I'm going to have a split U shape here for the leg and I'm going to have a forward facing curve on the top of the calf here and then coming off of that and back down to make the thigh back here like this and I'll go ahead and make this a split U shape here and also here, just to break up the space a bit. Now, I'm really sorry if I make this look really easy. I've been doing this a little while. <laughs> um, but then uh, coming up here, we have, most of this is our primary form line. This is mostly gonna be black. So we have black up here in the ear, the snout will be black, the lower jaw, the body shape is black, the tail is gonna be black, and the paws are gonna be black. 
the leg is going to actually be red. And we're also going to have red up here in the cheek, which I'm going to make a split U shape. And you'll see then that the cheek, the secondary form line here, the red, okay, is just touching in three spaces. And there's a little bit of what's going to be negative space separating it from the primary form line. And we can put in some teeth. And usually when drawing a wolf design, I'll have uh, two sets of canine teeth on top and bottom. As you can see here, four sharp teeth, and then top and bottom row of molars. And I like to have the molars split up a little bit so that there's not too many teeth. You can see here I've got three molars on top and bottom. If you put them really close together, you get a very, very toothy looking um, design. And it starts looking more like a puppy with baby teeth than a full grown wolf. Okay. And we'll do a secondary U form up here in the ear as well. With a narrow space between the U shape, uh, the primary U shape and the secondary. And I'm making this a form line um, secondary U shape, which again is going to be red, and then a fine line inside of that, um, just a fine line to break up the, the space inside. Okay. And then inside the body, we'll do couple split U shapes here to fill out the space. All right, now, when we have our design drawn out and we're ready to start painting, um, we need to make sure that we have our paint set up and ready. So I'll start with black paint on this. Um, now with acrylic paint, you want to make sure that um, your brush is wet. Okay. So I've got, actually I want to use a small brush here. Um, so I'm going to use this brush here. When you're wetting your brush, don't jab it in and out of the water. You'll damage the bristles. What you want to do is you want to put it into the water and lightly paint the bottom of your water cup or container. Okay, and that will get your brush nice and wet. You don't want to have too much water in your water cup because then um, the easiest way to get the excess moisture off then is to just tap it on the sides back and forth and that gets all of the excess moisture off of your brush okay now when you're putting paint in your dish a little bit of paint goes a long way okay uh, especially if you're using paint out of a tube a really little bit goes a lot long way because we have to modify the paint be able to use it. So I'm taking just a little bit of paint out of here and I want my paint to have um, a specific consistency. All right. If you're working out of a tube, the paint is too thick for what we want to do. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to wet our, our water down our paint a little bit and we take our brush and we just pull out drops of water and just put it right into our paint. 
until we get a consistency where you can load your brush. When you're loading your brush, you want to rotate your brush through the paint so you can get it to a fine point. And when you hold it down, um, if it starts to beat up on the bottom of your brush, it might be a little bit too watered down. So you can put a little bit more paint in. But if your brush does not glide through the paint very easily, it might not be watered down enough, okay? Um, if the paint is thick, you won't get a good consistent line, all right? So here we have our uh, number two brush loaded with paint. You keep your water handy because every once in a while you want to clean your brush. so that you don't get paint drying on it and it makes things difficult. All right, so I've gone ahead and drawn my design out on this nice paper here. And I used a really uh, hard pencil and you can see how the lines are very, very faint and hard to see. Um, when you're drawing, you don't need to emboss your paper, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a point where to start and I'm going to use my liner brush to just go along and paint just the outside edges of the lines and then the inside edges of the lines as well. So I'll show you how that looks. Okay. So we just move along here. right along this line. And we'll be reloading the brush as we go, as we need to. Now, if your paint is of a good consistency, it should flow right off the brush onto the paper fairly nicely. Where you can see you have a solid line flowing through here. Okay. Now, once I have an outside edge here done, come down through here with the nostril there. Okay. And then in this connecting point here with the ovoid. And then I'm going to paint the inside edge of one of our shapes here. Like so. Once you have your inside and outside edges uh, highlighted with your paintbrush, then you can go through and start filling in so that you are able to maintain a nice crisp edge, which makes your painting look really nice, okay? Now, another thing that's really important to remember is to breathe. I know some people like to hold their breath while they're painting, and that doesn't really help their painting very much, because when you hold your breath, um, a couple things happen. One, you're depriving your brain of oxygen and you're also creating stress. And if you're stressed, you're not going to be able to concentrate as well on your line and you're going to go oops far too often. So it helps to breathe nice and slow, um, find a way to relax. The painting should become almost a meditation in its process, okay? And you could paint towards you, away from you.
Just be careful with your lines. And if you can relax and breathe while you're painting, uh, you should get nice um, crisp edges on your lines so that you're not wavy all over the place, you know. Um, and it should start turning out looking nice. Like so. Now in some of these areas here, take and paint your edges with a finer brush. And then if you have wider areas to fill, you can take your larger brush and fill those in. And don't forget to make sure you keep your brush moist, keep it wet. <coughs> Excuse me, because if it dries out, um, your paint's going to dry onto your brush, and it's a good way to ruin a brush. Okay. And then when you're ready to clean your brush off so that before the paint starts drying on it, you'll notice that, you know, I've got a lot of paint on all the way up to the end of the bristles, the edge of the bristles. So I will go in and paint the bottom of my water container back and forth, nice and gently until I've gotten all the paint off of there. And then I could tap off the excess, set my brush down, take a sip of my coffee because it's not my paint water. Very important, you never put your paintbrush in your paint water, or in your coffee, I mean, because that's just embarrassing. You got to go get another cup of coffee and then you run out of coffee faster and life is just terrible after that. So I'm taking out my bigger brush here, my number six, and getting it nice and wet. And then I can come in and load my brush with paint, rolling it through there, getting lots of paint on here. And then I can come in between the lines and start filling the space. And then you'll see out here towards the edge, my brush is very wet. So my paint is getting a little bit thin on the brush itself. So you can go back through and reload. Okay. Now, if you get lots of practice in, you can use your bigger brush to do 
some of your painting right away. One of the nice things about acrylic is that it dries quickly as well. So my lines up here on this end are all dry already. The paint around here is already starting to dry. But I'll go ahead and come in here and I'll start with my eye. Painting the ovoid first. You usually want to take and block in your larger areas first. Okay. Now, the next thing that needs to happen around the eye is a fine line. And depending on the size of your painting, you could do a thicker fine line, or in my case here, a very small fine line. So I wanna make sure that my paint is watered down to a decent consistency where it'll flow nice and evenly. Load my brush so that I have a nice point on it and enough paint behind it to be able to flow out, okay? And breathe, very important to breathe because if you start holding your breath here on this line that you don't wanna mess up on, um, you'll start getting the shakes towards the end of your line. So I'll start at one end here and just very carefully paint this line around the eye, coming all the way around. And it's very important to control the pressure on your brush. If you're filling in a large area, um, treat it like you're petting your dog. You can push down really hard, you can move fast through it. But when you're painting a fine line like this, you wanna treat it like you're painting or um, petting a butterfly. You want a nice soft touch where the tip of the brush doesn't bend very much at all. And your line is just the width of the end of your brush. Now, if you stop, at some point on your line. Don't start right exactly where you stop. You want to back up on your line and then continue on through pulling your line out and then finishing it up like that. Okay. How's everybody doing? Everybody doing okay? Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm just kind of um, blocking in with my pencil, and then I'll do my sketch and paint it a little bit later. There you go. Yeah, this is most importantly an introduction to technique. And given the short period of time, I wanted to make sure that you can see how it is that I'm blocking things in and really see how I go about to control the brush and the paint um, to give opportunity for a cleaner line. Now I put very little paint in my palette tray and I'm still going with it. It's doing pretty good. 
but I want to get this ear painted and then I'll switch to a different color just because. Now, when you're painting fine lines like this, it's not like you're painting a landscape. Okay, you notice I'm holding the brush fairly close up on the bristles. I'm not holding it all the way back here. And to keep a steady hand, I'm doing all I can to make sure that my hand is resting or touching um, the paper and the surface so that I have the most can keep my hand the most steady while I'm painting. You know, when you're painting uh, landscapes and whatnot, you're holding the brush way out in the back of the handle and you're standing a little bit far away and you're just kind of dolloping paint where it needs to go. But when you're painting these kinds of lines, you want to keep your hand as steady as you can while you're going. I like to think of this as um, painting like you're having tea with the queen, you know, have your, have your pinky out. And you're using it to prop out when you need to, to help keep your hands steady. Okay. Now I want to do some of the red inside of the ear here, just so you could see how I go about doing this. Take and put a little bit of paint here, just a drop or two. And you see how I then take and Put just a little bit of water in with the paint, a drop or two, and then mix it up nice and thoroughly. And this allows the paint, once again, to um, flow a little bit better off of the brush. So I've got my brush loaded up. Now I can go through and paint my lines, outside edge and inside edge. Always remembering to breathe. Breathing is always very important. Now, when you're painting your red, sometimes it could be easy to water it down a little bit too much, but that's okay. 
All you have to do is wait for your paint to dry a little bit. And then you can go back through and put another layer down until you have a nice consistently filled uh, space. Looks nice and smooth. Like that. So here we have our primary form line, our black, our secondary with our red, and then we have our secondary fine line. So I'll reload my brush with a little bit of black paint. And once again, relax, breathe. And we put in our fine line in here, our trigon, which helps to break up the negative space and looks really nice like that. See if I can adjust it. There you go. You can see the color a little bit better now. Yeah. So then when I go through to draw in our paint in the body here, the body here will be black, tail will be black. And the paws will be black. And then the teeth are all going to be just fine lines. So we come in here and we just paint our fine lines. And again, I'm sorry I make this look really easy. But, you know, I enjoy painting, so I've been doing a lot of it. <laughs> See how the teeth are filling in and it really helps to give a little bit more shape and identity to the design. So this is obviously going to take a little while to, to get through this painting, but I have another painting that I did earlier that I can show you guys.
So this here is um, a painting that I did for a friend of mine. And you can see here, it's the eagle and raven design. Okay. So I've got the eagle on this side here with the pointy beak coming down, the tongue in the mouth here. I've got a wing coming off of the back of the head here with the ovoid, and the U shape coming off, and then the feathers coming down as more U shapes. Uh, the tail is an ovoid with the feathers coming down, which is a combination of a form line U and a split U shape. And then you can see how I have here with the, the, the talons, I've got an ovoid here and the very curvy pointy um, toes of the talons coming out. Whereas with the raven here, we have the straight beak coming out. We've got the crest on the top of the head, our ovoid for the wing and the U shape coming out as part of that as well with the feathers coming down. Our tail, which is another ovoid and feathers ovoid for the claw and the toes coming out off of that. And then up here, we have a little uh, round red ball up here. And um, what I said before about form line being used to as an abstract art form, representing um, not just objects and stuff, but also ideas. And so with this design here, you'll see with the sun, this becomes a visual representation of something that will um, conjure up a story that is very familiar to people up here of, of Raven stealing the sun. So this image here of the Raven at least becomes a part of a representation of a story. We see it and we think of that story and um, everything that comes with that. So that's my introduction to my process of uh, how to, um, how I go about creating my uh, designs and, uh, and how I go about painting them. Um, I wanna thank everybody for uh, coming. It is now four o'clock, which means uh, I have very little time before I get thrown out the door. Uh, so um, again, I would like to say thank you to everybody for being here and um, participating in this. And uh, um, again, thank you to the friends for, uh, the friends of the Shelton Jackson Museum for um, bring, bringing me here to be a part of this uh, demonstrators program and to the uh, National Endowment of the Arts for um, the grants that help fund this program. Um, I just really enjoy being here and being a part of this and sharing uh, my knowledge uh, and getting to meet cool people. So anyway, I hope all of you are doing well. Enjoy your Saturday here, the rest of it. Um, and yeah, have a fabulous rest of your weekend. And hopefully I'll uh, see you all again sometime. All right. Have a good one, guys. Bye-bye.